drummers, it's Alan here for DrumsTheWord.com. It's a pleasure to be here for you today, giving you this exclusive free lesson covering Cascade by Animals as Leaders. Of course, with Matt Gasker on drums. Now, it sounds a bit weird saying DrumsTheWord.com because I'm used to saying DrumGrades.com, but I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. Now, me and Rob, we go way back about 10 years in fact we used to go to the ACM a music university in England we studied together many many years ago and we've been friends ever since I knew Rob when he was a war on the arse of society so to see him grow to be this incredible teacher he is now is amazing <laughs> now what we're doing here guys is actually covering 12 seconds of music which is pretty incredible when you think about it but in that 12 seconds, Matt and Animals as Leaders managed to cram a whole lot of awesomeness in. If you go to drumstheworld.com, you can find a free PDF of this lesson. Here it is, guys. You can find this by clicking the link in the description of this video, and that will take you over to drumstheworld.com where you can download this PDF for free. And I'm gonna be referring back to this quite a few times during the lesson. So make sure you've got it so you can follow what we're doing. This starts off at about 12 seconds into the song and then ends at about 24 seconds. So here we go, guys. I'm going to give you a few methods to work this out. It's a tricky polyrhythmic pattern going on with a grouping of five going on between the snare and the kick drums with the right hand on a stacker cymbal just playing solid quarter notes. And we get this really interesting five over four type rhythm going on, which takes some thinking about it first, but when you work out how it all links up, it's not too bad. The speed of the song is 160 BPM. So that's the thing that's probably gonna take you guys the longest, it certainly did me. But what we gotta do, like always, start slow, build up, we'll get there in the end. Patience. That's what it's all about. Just to break down the pattern, we have groupings of four on the bass drums. Now, I like to play this right, left, right, left. But if you're left footed or you prefer to lead with your left foot, there's nothing wrong with that. So then when we add the snare drum into the mix, what we end up with is a grouping of five. So we get one snare followed by four kick drums. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And when you're comfortable with that, we can start doing those back to back. So that might be a nice thing to start with and feel free to go as slow as you need to there. Now what we're playing there is a straight line of 16th notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, but we're phrasing it in groups of five, hence why we get a five over four pattern. Now when we start adding the right hand into the equation, this is when the coordination can get really tough because as I said, the right hand is just playing a straight quarter note. Sorry, this stacker isn't very good. I threw it together. I'm sorry, I'm not a metal guy, all right? But you get the idea. You can play it on the bell of the ride if you don't have a stacker symbol, maybe even the hi-hats, just close them up. It doesn't matter, you can play it where you like. So as I was saying, the right hand's playing a quarter note and underneath that, we've got to start playing this five over four sixteenth note pattern. So let me add the right hand in with the snare drum and the bass drum so you can hear how it sounds and then I'll start to break this down. I'm going to do this pattern as a five four pattern for now because that's how long it takes for this pattern to resolve once. The actual song's in four four but we don't want to get too much into theory, so I'll tell you how to apply it to 4-4 in a little while, but for now we're just going to play it as a 5-4 pattern. <laughs> so 
So what I like to do with this pattern is just look at what the hands are going to play. If we can get these guys working together and work out the relationship between these, then we we'll start to really get into the feel of the pattern. So that would sound like this. So again, that pattern's in 5-4. So we start off on beat one with a unison hit together on one. And then on two, we get two E. So we're gonna get a right hand on the stack followed by a, a snare drum, one sixteenth after, da da, two quick notes. So that'll be two E. So that'll be from the beginning, we get one, two E. Then on beat three, nice and simple, we're gonna get three and. If you check out the music, you'll notice that on three, we've just got two eighth notes, three and. So they're a nice space apart. So that there would have been one, two E, three and. And then four is gonna be four E and a. Uh. So we've got the, the right hand hitting the stack on four. We wait two sixteenths and then we catch the a uh at the end of the bar. Four E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. And then what we could do is actually add the fifth, which comes straight after that snare. That feels a bit better when you join that together. So that would be 40 and a five. So all together we'll get one, two E, three and four, a five. One, two E, three and four and five. Be quite right. So that's how that would work. And you'll notice that what the snare drum does is pretty interesting because it shifts over one sixteenth every time. It starts off with the stack and then it will go one sixteenth after on two, then two sixteenths after on three, four sixteenths after on four, which is pretty cool. It just sort of shifts over. It's interesting how all of these notes, music, it's all mathematical. It weaves an interesting pattern, which is really cool. So the way I like to approach working out this rhythm now is to break it up into four separate sections and then once we join those together, we'll have it. So the first section will sound like this. So we've got our five notes, our five sixteenths with the snare in the four basses. One, two, three, four, five. And the right hand is gonna hit on the first snare and then it's gonna hit on the final bass, which is a left foot for me of that four. With a quick snare straight away after that. Then next we get our next four bass drums. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the right hand on the stack hit in the middle of those four on the right foot. And then the left hand is gonna hit after that. So if we try and link those two bits, the first two sections, we would get And there we have it. Now onto the third section, we would get this. So now the right hand on the stack is gonna hit on the second note of our group of four in the bass drum, which will be the left foot, with the left hand just landing right at the end. This is all gonna sound very complicated in a minute, guys, but trust me, if you just take each individual section and work on them and then start to knit them together, you will get this, I promise. So why don't we now try the first three sections? Mm -hmm. 
and there we go. Now, luckily, the fourth section is easy peasy. All we have is no snare drum, but we have a four grouping with the stack on the first beat of the four. And then we're done. That would be the whole bar, the whole resolution of the pattern in 5-4. So section one again, section two, section three, and then section four to finish it off. So just to summarize everything we just went through, here's a good step-by-step -step process to work through. You are gonna start off by just getting comfortable with a four note phrase on the feet. You're then gonna add the snare drum before that to create a five over four pattern. Start off by working on the hands. to get comfortable with that, and then start breaking up the pattern into four chunks. Chunk number one. Chunk number two. Part three. And then finally, and there it is. There's each individual section broken down. Put those together, you can't go wrong. So Cascade is in 4-4. At the moment, we're feeling our pattern as a group of five though, which is fine because in relation to the music, all you have to do is play your 5-4 pattern twice and then you're ready for the fill. Let's hear that. There we go. So just play that 5-4 pattern twice. and then you're ready for the fill. So let's work on this first fill then. So what we have are groupings of four on the hands with twos on the feet. So I like to stick that right, left, right, left, and then right, left on the bases. The suggested toms that you'll find on the notation by the way, this fill starts about halfway through bar three on the second line on the three E and a. Uh. The suggested toms and uh, positioning you see is only suggested. Don't worry too much. Every performance I've heard of Matt Garska playing this or Luke Holland or other guys, they all use different toms. Have a go at the toms we've written and then feel free to experiment with your own ideas. What we're gonna start off with is a group of four on the snare drum followed by two kicks. And then we're gonna go up to the high tom and play two high toms followed by two snares. And then we're gonna kind of go around the drums. On the snare, the high, the mid, the floor. Followed by two kicks. And then lastly, we're gonna start on floor tom and then come up to the snare for the last three notes. So all together, that would sound like this. And as I say, guys, you can move that in any way you want. So now we've got the fill, maybe we could put it in context. So we're gonna go back to our cool polyrhythm on the double basses, and then we're gonna go into our fill. So remember, we're gonna do two resolutions of our 5-4 pattern, and then into the fill. Nice and slowly, we would get this. I'll count in four. One, two, three, four. Ah, 
and maybe a bit quicker. Okay, and then what happens is, after that fill, we end on the two notes, or the two bass drums, I should say, and then we go straight back into our awesome polyrhythm on the double basses for another two resolutions of our 5-4 pattern. So the second fill is exactly the same concept as the first, with four hands followed by two feet, apart from the very end of the fill, when it just stays on hands, but we'll come on to that in a second. The recommended drums have changed slightly, so let's just work on that. It would sound like this. So basically we start on the snare just like fill one, and then we're gonna go across the mid tom and floor tom for two on each. And I really like this bit because we're going to start on floor and end on high with the two snares in the middle. And then we end with all hands, we're going to go floor tom followed by five snares. So it's kind of like and a 40 and a, and a 40 and a. So it'd be like two and a four, da 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 da. So going through that again, we would get this nice and slow. And there we have it guys, 12 seconds of utter madness, but it's awesome. So remember, two times through our cool polyrhythm pattern, then the first fill, back to two times through our polyrhythm pattern, and then the next fill. So now we've covered all that, how about hearing it at a nice walking pace? maybe a bit quicker. going on. So then I've got to come on to another very important point, which is building speed and precision. Now, of course, when you're talking about progressive rock metal like this, especially with double basses, accuracy is all important. So in order to build the accuracy and the speed required to play this song, because after all it is 160 BPM, we need to use a metronome. The best thing to do is maybe go onto your app store and get a free metronome app, which I've done. Or if you can pick yourself up a simple digital metronome online, they're brilliant. And if you've got an electric kit, it's even easier, just use the metronome on that. Now what I would suggest you guys do is start off at about 100 BPM and start working through the pattern. Start nice and slow. This is how I've built it up with speed as well. Work on the accuracy and then gradually build up from there. Now I feel like I've got a long way to go with this pattern too guys. I'm still working on it and I've not delved too much into theory and counting. This is just the quickest and simplest way that I find to get this pattern working with my students. So hope you've enjoyed it. So guys, as I was telling you at the start of the lesson, me and my dear friend Rob have got a cool new project on the go. It's called drumgrades.com. Now this isn't gonna be relevant for all you guys. If you study any of the graded drum books such as Trinity Rock and Pop, Trinity Guildhall or Rock School, then come on over 
give us a subscribe and like us on Facebook and Twitter. And um, what I'm doing is I'm demystifying the drum grade process from day one to distinction. I'm teaching you every beat and fill of every single song. I'm teaching you all the rudiments and all the hidden tips and tricks to get the best results in your drum exam plus some advice on entering, things to do on the day, all tips and tricks, all good stuff. So if you are somebody who does grades, come over and check us out. There'll also be lots of other free content coming soon, other little lessons like this. You might just like it. So that's me done, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this free video of Cascade. I hope I've helped to show you this pattern a little bit. I hope you've got something out of this. Please head over to drumstheword.com and sign up to the mailing list where you can get lots of free lessons like this. Please get on Facebook and YouTube and subscribe to drumgrades.com as well. And I hope you have an awesome time, guys, with this one. Happy drumming, and I will see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye for now.